So, Victor. Yeah. So, okay, let me share the screen. Uh, yeah, so, hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Victor, Victor Garcia. I'm, uh, I'm part of the Android SDK team. Uh, and first of all, um, yeah, before moving to the first session, the Android overview, I just want to check with all of you that uh, you can you have access and you are in the in this channel. Can you share? Can you see my screen, right? Uh, and can you see the Slack Academy yes. 2021 Android? Okay, so I just want to be sure that all of you are here. Uh, so in case you are not in this channel, just write a comment in the in the chat, please. And also. Um, in this channel, there is a pinned comment with a link to a drive uh, folder. So in this folder, we are going to upload all the resources for the for the sessions. Okay. So just for you to know before. Um, okay, so let's move to the first session. So the first session is about uh, it's just an overview uh, about the Android SDK, about what it is. Uh, because this this development track is about how to use the Android SDK to build your own application. It's not so much about Android development itself. It's more about how to use the Android SDK to build custom applications. So in first place, uh, what is the purpose of the Android SDK? So the SDK is a, a common good, it's a library that aims to make easier uh, the development of Android applications. Uh, and one of the main things that it deals with is the capability to work offline. I mean, it deals with all the synchronization with the server. Uh, so you don't have to care about uh, working with the different DHS2 instances. Uh, in the big picture, in the big picture of uh, an implementation, uh, we have here the the DHS2 API, I mean, the, the server, the instance. Here is the Android SDK, and the SDK interacts uh, continuously with the, with the API of the server. So it means that the, the Android application, in this case, this box represents the official Android application, interacts with the SDK, but uh, the, the Android application does not interact with the API directly. Okay. So the SDK is between the API and the Android application. Uh, all this is uh, what is offered by the University of Oslo. This, all of this is open source and is available for you. So what we are going to learn here is how to build your own custom applications uh, using the Android SDK. To, to be like at the same level of the official Android app. Okay, so yeah, the SDK is a um, quite new product. Uh, the first version was released in December 2019, like one year, less than one year and a half ago. Um, in the meanwhile, we have had yeah three versions. Uh, 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. And um, since 1.3, uh, we have aligned the release cycle with the with the official Android application and with the backend team. So in this case, yeah, 1.3 was was compatible and was released more or less at the same time that the 2.35 version of this two. And what is coming? is the 1.4 that is scheduled for next month for April. Uh, is that this uh, SDK will be used by the 2.4 uh, under the application and will be compatible with 2.36. So all these products will be released more or less at the same time in April. Okay. So this is the, yeah, the big picture of the SDK. So let's talk about uh, about the functionalities, the features that it offers. So the, the very ba basic thing that 
the SDK does is to uh, to keep uh, the metadata synchronized in the device, so you can you can use uh, yeah the the metadata and data uh, when you are offline in the device. Uh, so uh, to do that, the SDK um, has a copy the metadata, not the whole metadata in the server, just a small subset of the metadata, the metadata that is relevant to the user to do the data entry task. Um, yep. So yeah, so this again downloads the metadata to work offline. This again also uh, handles the synchronization of the data in both ways. Uh, it downloads the data and also it uploads the data. So yeah, you can uh, download uh, TIs, events, data values, do any modification, and then upload back to the server. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the number of TIs that are downloaded or data values or events uh, are parameterized, and they can con be configured using the Android uh, settings app. That's, I will talk about that later. Yeah, so we have all this information, uh, metadata and data in the device. So the next layer uh, is the data access layer. So the, the SDK offers, exposes the information to the application in like in this way, right? uh, uh, how you can see in the screen. So the SDK exposes the model, uh, exposes is a uh, convenient method to access the data. Uh, so you have type safety in the information. Also, uh, yeah, the SDK is between the server, the test to instance, and the Android application. So uh, when there are small modifications in the web API or there are changes in the model, uh, the application does not have to care about that. Uh, it is the SDK who cares about that. Uh, and we usually are, the SDK is usually compatible with the current version and at least the two previous ones. Uh, in, this, in this graphic, you can see that, for example, uh, the version 1.3 was compatible with 2.35 and then all the way down to 2.30, even with 2.29, it was partially compatible. Uh, what else? Uh, error management, yeah, because the, the offline nature of the Android application, it is more likely to have some errors at sync. Uh, integrity check, because uh, I, I said that we don't download all the metadata in the server, but just as I've said. So this may cause the, that there are some misconfiguration in the server. For example, there is a program rule or a program action pointing to a data element that is not in the program. Things like that are handled by the, by the SDK. To be sure that everything makes sense. Um, yeah. And um, I mentioned that you all always work with the data that is offline in the device, but there are some well, there are some functionalities like the online search where you can you can query the server directly. For example, if you don't want to download a, a large list of PIs to work offline, you can search online if you have connection. Yeah, the, um, well, another one, the uniqueness of the attribute values. Uh, if you know, uh, the attribute values can be configured to be unique and also to be generated by the backend. So this becomes an issue when you are offline and you don't have access to the backend. Uh, so yeah, there is a functionality to download to pre-generate uh, these values by the backend and reserve those values, those values to be used in the in the SDK when you are offline. 
um, yeah, when yeah, all the changes in the in the model uh, in different DHS two versions, all the changes are managed by the ABSDK. So yeah, you don't have to worry uh, very much about that. Uh, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I know that some of you have attended uh, an academy last year or even the previous year. So until this point, oh, uh, there are the functionalities that, that were included in the first version, I mean, since the very beginning. And now we, I am going to mention some functionalities that were included in the in this uh, other releases, 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Like, yeah, like this one, SMS. Uh, in 1.1, the SDK includes support for SMS synchronization for EAPIs, events, and aggregated data. Uh, the Android settings app, and this is an application that is becoming more and more important. Uh, this is an application that is available in the App Store or App Hub. Um, the SDK is compatible uh, since version 1.1, and this is great because this application allows you to configure, for example, the, the number of PI that you want to download in the first download, uh, or the number of events, or, for example, the number of research values. Uh, yeah, and the SDK uh, read, the, read those values and, con and yeah, consumes those values directly. So yeah, this is really a really nice app too. And you should take a look at. Uh, encryption, uh, it was introduced in 1.2. Uh, this is a feature that was, that was highly requested by the community. And, and also, uh, this is this can be configured in the Android settings app as well. And what it does is to encrypt the local database in your device for more security. And, and it introduces a small overhead in performance as from 5 to 15 percent. Uh, another important thing is the, is the parser, the expression parser. That you know that yeah historically uh, the the expression I mean the expression in prime indicators validation rules uh, uh, indicators uh, they usually have different parsers and different evaluators in different clients for example in, in web in Android or in the backend so now there is a library that is is shared uh, with the backend. So the backend and the and Android use, use the same library to parse the expression, which is great because you yeah you would expect the same result uh, from the parsing, and this is used in the prom indicators and in the validation route. And then some yeah, some utility classes because there is a lot of uh, logic that is pure DHS2 logic, like for example, if you want to know if uh, you can edit an event or add a new enrollment, and it depends on the access of the user, things like that, all that logic uh, is uh, it's going, is gradually being included in the SDK. Yeah, so to just to sum up uh, this overview, uh, what the SDK does is to make easier the development of Android application. Um, this is a product for Android developers. I mean, this is a library. This is not for end users. And the SDK is written in Java, uh, but we are moving uh, to Kotlin. But you know that Kotlin is now the the recommended language 
for Android, recommended by Google. So we are moving to Kotlin. But in your Android application, you can use uh, Java. If, uh, if that's not mine, because Java and Kotlin are interoperable. So you can still use Java, although I would recommend to take a look at Kotlin if you have not done that yet. Um, yeah, the, the database is in SQLite. And just to mention that this is not an, uh, an isolated product. Uh, this is a common effort uh, between the, the SDK team and the backend team to, yeah, to agree and to make efficient, uh, efficient calls and yeah, to be as efficient as possible in the development. Yeah, so, well, before moving to the first, to the next session, to the skeleton overview, uh, I just want to show you a slide about the resources of the, of the Android SDK. Um, yeah, the SDK is available in GitHub. The source code, everything is, is there. The documentation is in this link. This, this one. So yeah, I would recommend you at some point to to go to the documentation and take a look, at least just to know what is included in the documentation. Uh, yeah, because in this in this workshop uh, we don't have time to go uh, through all the functionalities and everything in the SDK. Uh, so yeah, at least we want that you are able to. Uh, with information in this workshop and the information in the documentation, yes, uh, to start building your own app with the SDK. So yeah, please take a look at this. The skeleton application is is the skeleton the this application that we're going to use in the workshop. Marcos is going to talk about this in the next session. Jira, if you want to report uh, a bug or request any feature, and the community. In the community, you can ask uh, everything you want. I mean, from functional questions or more technical stuff, whatever you want. So, yep, this is all from my side. Uh, if you have any question about this, uh, I think it's, it's better to use the Slack channel. So if you have any question, please use the Slack channel and we will answer them. And the next the next session is about the skeleton app. Uh, Marcos, Marcos, are you are you there? Are you ready? Victor, there is yep. there is a question actually. Um maybe uh, we should stop now the recording uh, for the